did, did you see the interview with uh, Mika Mika Rich a couple of a couple of days ago with with him? No. Yeah, M- Mika went over. Mika to liked him, I think, didn't he? Yeah, he went over to Florence and there was a, a, yeah. a decent interview. M- M- yeah. Mika Richards, though, you know what what a character he was, and he, him and him, him and Jolin still bleed bleed City now. You know, you, every time they're on TV, it's like the chests out. You know, proud to represent. You know, City. Uh, yeah. what, what what were them two like when they was uh, both together playing? Well, I knew Mika when he first came up through the, the youth team and the, from being 15, 16, he was an exceptional talent at that age. But he was, Mika is like what you see. Bubbly, always laughing, always happy. You'd think he does like serious weightlifting every day, wouldn't you? Never lifting no, a weight. Never lifting a weight, has he? When he's when he's stripped off, it lo- it looks like he's been painted. Yeah. He's that so defined and everything. But he's just got the most lovely disposition. Brilliant lad. Yeah, he's, uh, he, he he bonded well with uh, Jolian when he was at City. Yeah, and it, it, it was it was un- very close them really. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jolian uh, again, lovely disposition. Uh, bright lad, they both done really well on television. As I think, just been lucky tonight. I'm surprised Nadam isn't being on a lot more because he's he's. I think Nadam could be brilliant on TV, and I think he'll probably get a lot more gigs. He's very educated, isn't he, Nadam? Very, very clever lad, lovely lad, well mannered, very thoughtful. I mean, he never caused me a problem with Kit or anything ever. Uh, I mean, maker, I think. I think Maker's told the story of when I, in his first training session, on his first trip with England, he he rushed in to tell me, I've got to go to England. Can you, can you get me stuff together? So I packed his boots and I packed two left boots. So on his first England trip, he's not got any boots. So he had to ask. Stephen Gerrard lent him a pair of his, I think. So that's what he, he trained in those Stephen Gerrard boots because I'd packed the wrong boots, but it never made an issue of it or anything. In fact, I didn't even find out till, till later on when somebody told me. So, But yeah, genuine guy, great guy. I think he did like Mancini. I mean, apart from Mancini having about seven fights with different players, I think quite a few players thought he was OK and... Can I, I mean, just ask I said, you a question about that, Chappie? Yeah. After the Wigan Cup final, yeah, obviously he was sacked, yeah. um, and then, <clears throat> then I think not long after, a couple of days later, Vinny got suspended by the club. Right. What did he do? I don't know. I don't know anything about. It. I don't remember Vinny getting suspended. Yeah, I, I, I honestly I don't know. Some, I vaguely remember so, something. I, th- I think I think Vinny was a uh, very very vocal ag- against Man- Mancini, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, at, at, yeah, at, I, at I, a time. I don't. I think that was the general feeling throughout the club at that particular time. It was no surprise when we were informed he was going. Um, I'm assuming, yeah, like the rest of us, you knew before the game he was going. Sorry. I'm assuming, like the rest of us, you knew before the game he was going. Well, I did, and I found it very bizarre at the time because I remember when the players were warming up on the pitch, I I went out to watch them a bit, and Mancini was stood next to Caldoun having a conversation. And I thought, does he know, or are the rumours correct? You know, that made me a little bit unsure at the t- at the time, but I found it strange that them them two were having a conversation at pitch side. Mm. Uh, I don't know whether he had an inkling that he was going at the time. Uh, I'm sure he must have had some kind of uh, heard a rumor or he felt something. I, I don't know, but uh, I think everybody else knew. I've got a rashy chappy. What was Mario like to work with? Was it was oh, he like a great Mario? Mario's was he, brilliant. Was he as was he as bonkers as the press made out? I know a lot of the stories for the press wasn't true, but how many of them was true? And, and do you know which ones were like? I think I think there was one where his mother sent him to John Lewis or something for 
an ironing board or something. He came back with a quad bike. Listen, everything you've heard and read and seen about Mario will all be true. <laughs> he was, I mean, he was, I, he was an intelligent guy. He was a bright lad. I really got on with him. But he was the most unpredictable man on the planet. You just didn't know what he was going to do. His locker, two lockers on either side of his locker in the dressing room were empty because the other players didn't want to change next to him. They were scared of what he would do and everything. Like I, could, I used to do tours of the training ground, and like evening Tommy Riz. Booth, Tommy, pardon? So, it's so it's all right, evening, it's all right, it's all right chappy. It's not me stunt double. What's just joined us? Oh, he's here, is he? And Tommy Booth or Peter Barnes or Richard Edgell or Ian Brightwell or Asa Ratford, somebody like that, would show them around the stadium <laughs> and then they'd be transported over to Carrington and I'd show them around the training complex. And I can remember going in the dressing room with the first tour after Mario had left and I said to them, this is Mario's locker, opened the door and about 30 parking tickets fell out. 30? 30. <laughs> 30 and a wage slip and he'd been he'd been fined he was always getting fined he'd been fined by the club that month a hundred grand there was still plenty left on the bottom line i, I, I bet there was a, <laughs> it's, it, it is an off off route question you know when a professional footballer gets the yellow card is it the same is it the same as say a, a sunday league player what you know the, the fine uh good question all depends on the mass. All depends on the manager, on the official rules at that particular time. I can imagine that yes, some do and some don't. I think it a lot depends on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, definitely certain managers have certain rules different from others. So it, a lot would depend on that. But there is a system of fines for. A disciplinary stuff, yeah. But Mario, I mean, he's get fined for all kinds of different things. Like what? Give us, give us, give I us. I think when, when, when he first got when he when he he first week he was at City, the police stopped him, and he had like fifteen grand or something on the front seat. And the, the police said, "What are you doing with all this money?" He says, "Well, I'm, I'm a footballer. I'm rich." <laughs> <laughs> he he used to train in like. Diamond bracelets and necklaces and diamond earrings. I can remember him coming in after one training session. He said, Chappy, I've lost my diamond earring. Uh, it, 10 grand it were. I mean, he weren't bothered. So I've gone out on my hands and knees trying to find this diamond earring. Never found. Well, I told him I didn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no, never found it, but he wasn't No, that's bothered. an inside story. He wasn't bothered. <laughs> <laughs> like having his car camouflaged. I mean, what was that all about? So you couldn't but see I, it. <laughs> as I say, as I say, but, but I think he had his car impounded twenty-seven times. So he, owed, he owed Manchester City Council tens of thousands of pounds when he left. <laughs> I think the club uh, paid it up for him. Yeah, it, what, one of the one of the stories with, with Mario, what will always probably be legendary with, with City fans, is uh, the well the night bef the night before the the six one where his bathroom somebody set fireworks off in his bathroom and it produced the why always me. Is it you who printed that for him? Yes. I did. Yeah, yeah, and it it was every morning. He used to take me at the back of Carrington's at the dressing rooms. There was a little area like a little. A few tables and things you could have a coffee or a cup of tea or something. And every morning, Mario used to chappy come on. We used to go around the back and sit at this table, and he'd have one of my fags. I used to smoke them, and he'd have probably two cigarettes one after the other. Never bring his own. He must have had about 80 packets and 70 lighters off me all the time he was there. Never got me one cigarette. On this particular day, he said, come on, Chappy. So we've gone round the bike, and he says, I want you to print something up on my compression shirt. These were these compression shirts under the shirt. Because if you, here's another story. There's, Nike never made a long sleeve shirt, player's shirt. They just sold replicas, long sleeve shirts, but never a long sleeve match shirt for players. Jolly and Lescott always used to wear long sleeve. He wouldn't wear anything else but long sleeve shirts, so I had to get them from the shop. <laughs> they weren't real match shirts, they were replicas. 
Anyway, so this morning, Mario's took me around the back and said, I want to get this printed on my shirt. What do you think? I said, yeah, I'll print it up. I said, but you can't have anything that's offensive or it's going to offend United fans or anybody, really. So he came out with one or two things. And I said, no, Mario, I'll... I think that's Go on then, what the was question. it? What did he originally want? And then he said, oh, well, I can't remember them. I just, I just erased them from my mind when he said them. <laughs> and then he said, he just said, what about why always me? And as soon as I said it, I thought that's just about perfect. And then I got in trouble after that game because they wouldn't let me print any other shirts because... Instead of just lifting his shirt up to there, he lifted it over his head and got booked. <laughs> so David Platt message from Mancini, don't you print anything else up. I mean, he could have been sent off for doing that yeah. stupidly, lifting it over his head instead of just to there showing it. But after five minutes, it had gone global. So the day after, Mario's saying to me, get on to Umbro now. We want commission on that. <laughs> all this this stuff being so <laughs> so I've had to ring Umbro up and request this from Mario. We want they said sorry, you can't patent words, we can't do anything about it. But uh, it was the most it, it was him who came out with it and it was the most ideal thing he could have ever said for me. It's iconic, because, isn't it? it? Yeah, it is. Because every time he did something, he was in the press, he was in the media, he was on television. I mean I can yeah, remember fit, he got fit, he got perfect. sent off at Arsenal. Um, I always go in the dressing room following a player who's been sent off to see how they are, see if they're okay. And he'd thrown his boot through the plasma television in the dressing room. <laughs> so we played Dynamo Kiev at home one night. And he got sent off after about 20 minutes. I don't know whether you remember it or not. So he's gone in the dressing room. So I followed him in the dressing room again to see if he's all right. And he's just sat there in front of his locker quietly with his head down. And then, this is after 20 minutes, I think, of the game. In the next 10 seconds, Mancini stormed into the dressing room, swearing and screaming at the top of his voice, these obviously Italian expletives at Mario, waving his arms about like a man possessed, just going berserk. What This is while the game's going on. So I'm thinking, and then he turned to go back out to the game after about 10, 20 seconds and saw one of the players' bags because they used to stay in a hotel overnight. I think it was Pantillimon's Louis Vuitton case. Mancini picked this case up, turned and threw it at Mario's head. <laughs> and Mario's like ducked a bit and it's just at the back of his locker and fell down. Then Mancini's run up to him, screaming, obviously, Italian expletives again. And I'm thinking, hit him, Mario. Because <laughs> 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 oh, I'd stepped in between them thinking, it's going to kick off here. You know, we've got to try and stop this if I can, but secretly thinking, hit him, Mario. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> then he just turned around and went back watching the game. But it was a, every day was an adventure with Mario. You know, I was, there was always something happening, something different. He was, a big kid, wasn't he? I mean, he was never a fantastic ability, but never, ever, ever will be a team player. He was so much of an individual. In fact, I think the Aguero thing was his only assist. It was. Yeah, it, it, it was, was yeah. I, I, th I think his only assist while he was at City, wasn't it? Not, not just well that be. season, yeah. Did he practice yeah, penalties? Great or... talent, really talented lad and, and I suppose if a club signs him they made the money back in shirt sales and stuff because you know everybody wants everywhere I go I, I, people always what was Mario like what did you, I was Mario and I went to interview him actually in Nice when I worked for City TV after I finished doing the kit and it was just brilliant to see him again he was great um, he I just got a call up he, again hasn't he he's what he's just been called up to Italian squad again hasn't he has he yeah. Yes, he has. Yeah, Mancini's called him up. My God, I'm staggered. Yeah, well, I sure think we all are. <laughs> make sure all the suitcases are out of the changing room then, just in case. Because <laughs> they had a fight in training, those two. Yeah, yeah we, it, 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 it was, it was the, the, the bib incident where he couldn't get a, a simple bib on, you know, there's so, so many oh, great memories of Mario. Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, it was a, I mean, it's a real character. Uh, and as I say, I, I got on great with him. What what other characters sort of like back in the day like like your 
Kev Orlocks and stuff oh. like that. Well, in those days, it was, I think, it, it was, there weren't a lot of mobile phones on uh, 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 about at the time and a, a lot, not a lot of social media. So I think they could get away with a little bit more than they can now. But s- s- characters, yeah, Kevin Orlock, uh, Richard Dunn, the, Jeff Whitley, Collar Off. I still it, keep in I touch think, with Cop. Was it Je- uh, Jeff Whitley who, who kick started your testimonial went at stop yes he did yeah i'll always be very grateful to him for that is it jeff whitley transformed himself from somebody who had the most incredible engines could run all day talented lad went down completely the wrong road drink drugs everything it's all been well documented now now he's transformed himself into an absolute gentleman who lectures young people on the dangers of drugs and drink and stuff like that is just the top top fella now um but it, yeah it, it did go off the rails um quite badly but yeah i mean at the time there used to be a cre- especially probably when joe was managed there used to be a crew who used to drink quite regularly steve howie richard dunn uh well there's been that great characters throughout the years I, I mean I don't I don't know what the dressing rooms are like at the moment um, and obviously they can't do half as much as we could do in those days but I don't I don't, some... I don't think there'd be much Moretti flying around and stuff like that before the game or at half time will they like like you know years gone what what players have you have you known over the years at City what You've been surprised that they've not made it, and there's been players where you're surprised they have made it. Uh, somebody's asked me this once before about did you uh, which player did you detest or didn't like? I can honestly say all the time I was there, I never disliked any player at all. No, not obviously, di- not dislike at the where you think I know, yeah, yeah but I've just um. Well, I, I didn't, whenever a player came to the club, I had no great expectancy of them whatsoever. I, I just formed my opinion for what they did there and then, mm-hmm. what they were like within the club. And I can't really say that I wasn't shocked or disappointed with anybody who's come to the club, really, uh, uh, talent-wise or performance-wise. Uh, Even Mendy. Sorry? Even Mendy. Mendy was brilliant when he first came, and he was brilliant for Monaco. I thought it was a fantastic signing. And he was fantastic in the dressing room. What a character. He got the quiet ones together. He, he got an atmosphere going in the dressing room. Uh, obviously, it's very unfortunate to what's happened to him since. But as uh, far as character-wise, he was very important in that dressing room. He's one of the few characters these days in that dressing room that, that formulated that kind of atmosphere. I mean, I don't, I wasn't exactly privy to it all that, but stories that I'm getting was that he was that kind of character. Uh, but we had dozens of people like with the character of Mendy in the dressing room in those days. There was so Col- many. Color, yeah, Collar Off. Collar Off was class. Collar Off was yeah. just, just brilliant. I, I, on these tours, I used to I used to open his locker um, and he used to have a shirt, an Everton shirt in his locker with Herbert on the back because I had this Whoever was an idiot, I'd call them a Herbert at the time. So uh, <laughs> if people did something stupid, apologies to anybody called Herbert. I don't. <laughs> any, anybody who did something stupid, you, know, Herbert, they'd all be a Herbert then. And we were playing Everton one day, and and Kolarov saw Hibbert warming up <laughs> for Everton. And he said, Chappie, get his shirt, get his shirt. Look, he's called Herbert. I said, it's nice, it's Hibbert. He said, get his shirt. <laughs> so I had to see Gonzo, the Everton kit man, have to get his shirt. And I had to change the the eye to a knee. And it was Herbert then. <laughs> and he, he took it everywhere with him. And I can't remember, I think he took it with him when he left. 
he, 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 from the outside, Kolarov seemed one of these really, really quiet and moody characters. But I think what what changed a lot of people's mind was the uh, at the Christmas time when he did the was it the Christmas Carol? Yeah, yeah. He oh, gave I, that impression. He gave that dour, that dour impression. But yeah, the Christmas Carol sums him up completely. He loved, he loved having fun. Loved the laugh. Enjoyed himself. Uh, the, good the, character. It was the well, one of my all-time favourites who've ever been there. So, but it did. This persona comes over with him when you, when you, you like just look at him in general. But he was great character. Yeah, great character. It, it was. It was. Would you say he's the uh, the half man of the club? When you Riz, you need it. to turn your sound up, pal. Can't hear you properly. Sorry, mate. I can hear him. Yeah, yeah. It's, you need to turn yours up. <laughs> can, you hear me? <laughs> can, you, can you hear me now? Oh, that's yeah. better. Can you hear me now, right? Um, who was you? Were well, you with classes like the, the? You know, people going about. Oh, he was a hard man. He was a hard man. Who? Who was your hard man when you were there? Who was on the pitch? You mean? Yeah, both. You know, who was the, the the like they have an enforcer, don't they? I guess every every changing room has an enforcer, don't they? And who 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 were the names that you'd conjure up? I think the bravest. Was Richard Dunn? He would run through a brick wall. Mm. Zabaleta. Mm. Uh, Vincent Company was hard as nails. De Young. Uh, Nigel De Young. Nigel De Young. Nigel De Young was yeah. He was he was tough. Uh, I'd have to say Richard Dunn was probably the. The bravest player that I've ever seen. It was it was a player that no one had messed with. If somebody sort of said to him, "No, you know, you need to stop that." Uh, Craig Bellamy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he comes across as that. Yeah, yeah he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he'd always have a word, wouldn't he? I guess. Craig yeah. Bellamy, half time, would have a word if he thought somebody wasn't pulling the weight. Yeah. Or, so I can remember. I can remember at Portsmouth once. We played at Portsmouth and we got in at half time and he just slaughtered Rubinho. Mm. I mean, Rubinho couldn't understand English to that extent, <laughs> which was fortunate for him. <laughs> it was Alano who defended him in the end, but Craig just opened up. He didn't suffer fools. He said what he thought. Yeah. Bell Bellamy was one of them players, Jaffe, where if he didn't play for you, you couldn't stand. He was like a, a wasp. Yeah. You couldn't stand him. But when he plays for you, oh, yeah. the, you know, everyone's perspective changes. Everybody needs a Craig Bellamy. And what what a, what an underrated player he was as yeah. well. Some of the goals what he scored. Yeah. You know, there was times where I think he grabbed Fer Fergie by his throat one in a derby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can remember that we were in Tenerife when we signed him. Because he he flew out to join us and he trained. I trained with him the first afternoon he arrived at the club. Me uh, and Ed Nizwicky and Craig Bellamy did some work on the pitch together, all three of us. That was the first day he arrived. Uh, very confident character. You know, very... As a, a, probably very underrated, like you said, as well, on the pitch and that. But yeah, brave, good skill. But a real, a real tough character. Didn't suffer fools at all. No. And would have challenged anybody of any size. Just bad knees. Yeah. And there was, <laughs> there was, there was a rumor going round because that was, I think that uh, with Mark Hughes and there was a rumor going round that was going to be take, taken over by Sheikh Mansour. And the rumor was that uh, Mark Hughes loaned City the money until the takeover, you know, went through for Bellamy. Don't know anything about that. I'm not. Uh, I'm not privy to everything that went on. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Les, yeah. Mika Richards I, and Nader Manua could handle themselves, and all by the way. I, I wonder. I wonder why I'd like brick sh walls, oh. aren't they? Yeah, Les. Yeah. How would you like to be working under Pep now? Uh, I'd still love to be in that dressing room, whoever the manager was. Uh, you just... Obviously, there are, they must be a phenomenal manager. Uh, his record speaks for itself. 
He lives, eats and breathes football. I think the work would would be intense. Yeah. And I would probably have two or three helpers at least. So in that sense, yeah, I'd love to be, I'd love to be still working there. To, to watch that team, not just every week in a match, watch them in training, to be involved with them, looking after yeah. them, doing everything for them, cleaning the 12, 13 pairs of boots each that they have. <laughs> One, one, uh, one, of my, one of my saddest saddest moments over, say, the past 10 years at City is the departure of uh, Edin Dzeko. Uh, he's, he's, he's done an, an interview recently saying under uh, Pellegrini, he just he left basically because of Pe- Pellegrini. Uh, right. well, you, you, would, you would have the hump, really, if you got re- if you'd a player like Edin Dzeko and you get replaced by Wilfred Boney, wouldn't you, really? But, Absolutely. But yeah. Dzeko, I, I still think, is a magnificent player. What was he like to be around? Absolute diamond. I went to interview him in uh, in Rome. Uh, I went to his house uh, when I worked for City TV. Um, I went to watch Rome play Turin because Joe Hart was playing for Turin, Turino mm-hmm. that night. And obviously, Edin was playing for Rome. Uh, I, Salah was playing for Roma at the time too. Uh, and then I interviewed Edin after he'd... Uh, after I just went over for a couple of days, interviewed Joe Hart in Turin and interviewed uh, Edin. Uh, Edin actually gave me a signed Roma shirt, which I've still got somewhere. Um, diamond of a man, absolute gentleman, very underrated player. Very. Uh, scored a lot of important goals for us and obviously mm-hmm. got the equaliser in the big one. Yep. Uh, but yeah, d- Gentleman, absolute gentleman. Uh, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know his feelings towards Pellegrini until you've just said so. I, d- I didn't know. Yeah. I wouldn't really question the a lot of the players. I would only talk to them about possibly a, a manager if they asked me specifically, and then sometimes I would be diplomatic and wouldn't say what I really thought. But it never really, uh, I never really. I thought Pellegrino was smashing for me. I mean, he was, he was a really nice and polite fellow, which uh, that's all that matters to me. You know, if they treat me with a bit of respect and and, and friendliness, then I'd do anything. I did Not just the, the players I looked after. There was about 20-odd, 30 staff every day that I had to cater for as yeah. well. So, you know, it's a lot of bodies to deal with every day. But, yeah, I mean... Man, Mancini's lost. Sorry? Mancini's lost. Yeah, he could have been. I, he could I'd have, have done so kicking, much more. I'd yeah. have done anything. I, well, I did still do everything for him, but I, I would have done it with a lot more pleasure and passion if yeah. he'd have just been half civil with me instead of wanting to get his head knocked off <laughs> seven times. <laughs> well, you, you, you touched on the uh, the equaliser in in the big one there. What was it like that day behind the scenes when we when <sighs> when we won? Well. Uh, there was no room for me on the bench to start with because <coughs> Mancini had a lot of hangers on and they couldn't find a seat on the bench. Probably the only Premier League team that the kit man didn't sit on the bench for the whole 90 minutes because there was very rarely a seat for me. So I watched the game in the players' lounge, the warm-up gym and the dressing room. <laughs> and for the... Equaliser and up the tunnel as well. I used to go up the tunnel and have a look. But for the equaliser, I was in the the players' warm up room when Edin scored. Then I shot into the dressing room, watched it in the dressing room when Aguero scored, and within ten seconds, I was at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> and it, it was it was just chaos mayhem everybody was flying about and we didn't know whether the game had finished it was still going on and then there was certain points in my euphoria at the time because of the results of winning the Premier League in such a it'll never be repeated there was that sinking feeling that Mancini would be there for another year (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> the thing is Mancini didn't win the league did he it was the players